Hey, welcome to Path Soundbites IGTV. Keeping new music alive is what I do on the radio and now on video. Conducting live chats with the artists and learning the story behind their latest release and also playing their new video. Special thanks to my good friend Jody Best of Best Bet Promotions for coordinating and scheduling today's artists. Having over 20 plus years in the music industry, if you're looking for a highly successful promotion and marketing professional who's extremely motivated, look no further than Jody Best. For more information, contact Jody via email at bestbedpromo at yahoo.com. Special thanks today to my sponsor, GoGo Tuners, for all guitar players looking for a focus on ease of use, readability, durability, and accuracy. Look no further. The GoGo Tuner is the choice of many touring professionals and a favorite of casual players. GoGo's signature green urine and red your out screen makes tuning quick and easy. For more information, go to the website at gogotuners.com. Special thanks to WBXO Classic Rock Radio Redefined, allowing me to keep new music alive on the radio airways on the Pat Show every Sunday from 5 to 8 Eastern Standard Time. Only on WBXO Classic Rock Redefined. And a big thank you to Mr. Evan Balzer for allowing me to use his amazing instrumental that you're hearing right now. It's called Trails. To find out more incredible music by Evan, go to his website at evanbolzer.com. And my guests today, well, they're returning guests. They're like brothers to me. Mike Moster and Tony Cavino of In Theory. And Mike and Tony have released their latest single called The River. And man, if you like Swamp Rock, this is it. A great follow-up to their single, Heroes. We're going to talk to Mike and Tony. We're going to have a blast. I promise you that. We're going to play not only The River, but Heroes and Dance Alone. A video and song that Mike has put together with the wonderful, the beautiful... Ladisha Latimer, who's also featured on the song The River. It's a whole lot of in theory and Mike Monster and Tony Gavino right here on Pat Soundbites IGTV. Hey, live on Pat Soundbites IGTV, keeping new music alive with these two guys. I don't know why I'm even laughing already. You can do music alive on the radio and on the video. I got these two handsome devils, right? Two, right? Yeah, they're definitely two. They're right behind me. The guy with the gun, and then the guy, I don't know. He's got the guitar, he's got the gold, the tuner. Uh, my two brothers from two different mothers, I don't know. The incredible rock vocal powerhouse of Long Island, of the island of Long. From the mouth of big <laughs> Tony Covino. Hey Pat, how you doing? Uh, I, lost my, I lost my mind, Tony. What can I say? <laughs> Happy birthday, Tony. <laughs> birthday Thank the you. other day. Thank you. And in this corner down below, he is the virtuoso of music, the CEO of the Go, go, <laughs> go, go, go. Go tuner. I don't know if you can see it. Thank you. The go go tuner. He is a guitarist. He's a producer. He's a songwriter. Tony's a songwriter too. He's a fashion enthusiast. Check it out. Huh? What do you think? Huh? And he's not, <laughs> and he's not wearing his hat tonight. My man, no, my no. brother from Muscle in Muscle Shows from the Island of Long. In Muscle Shows, my brother, Mr. Mike Monster. Gentlemen. How you doing? How you doing, brother Pat? What an intro, right? I, and thanks for your time. I hope to see you soon. And we'll see you. <laughs> yeah. Special oh. occasion, so there's there's no hat today. This for Pat. No hat. No hat. Come no on, hat. Mike. No hat. Well, I we are it up just for Pat. We we are uh celebrating 
your latest single, The River. It came out what April, early April, right? Like the seventh, the eighth. Yeah, about two weeks ago. And it's got over twenty six thousand plus views. And what a great job on that video, man! That that guy did a, a super cool job on the video. Yeah, we we were really happy with it. I I think it was. Uh... I think I'm getting reputation that's driving people crazy. You know, with you know, first it started with Tony and everyone in the studio. This this poor guy um, did um, well. First, I had to do the storyline, and then we had to do an outline of the whole uh, like storyboard it, and then we did seven edits, and per each edit, there was something like four or five changes. So there was about thirty five edits. And, um, but the guy had such a great attitude and, you know, fantastic, very professional. And, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're thrilled how it came out. And, and they certainly he's probably floating in the river after he got done with you saying, <laughs> you're only charging me like uh, $10.50, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my shirt on. Who are your heroes, right? Huh? I got Ooh. the backdrop in behind me, the river. I like it. And, and heroes, we can't forget here. And today is a special day for my brothers in, in theory. Chris, we're not only going to play the river after my chat, we're going to play heroes and we're going to play a little dance alone. I can't have any of these people making me look bad. I got to play the three, the triple, the trifecta here on Pat Soundbites IGTV of in theory. So there, take that, all you people trying to pull one over me. I got the shirt. Right, Tony? I didn't have a shirt. Who are you? you don't have a shirt, right? Who are your musical heroes, Tony? You are, Pat. You're my. I, I don't play any. Well, let's not even get into that. I, well, I, 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 I mean, you set Pat up for that one. You should have went with it. You know, you know what the right answer is on that one, Pat. I, <laughs> I, I don't. Do you play? <laughs> You're man. Yeah, I, okay, you take it the high road. Well, I love the song, Lay Me Down in the River and Wash Me. No, Lay Me Down and Wash Me <laughs> in the River, depending right. on who's doing all of that. I mean, you guys killed it. Uh, you both wrote it, right, Mike? I mean, uh, absolutely, right? And um, where was what was the thought about it? I mean, obviously, you had the Tennessee River in your backyard. But what was the actual story? I mean, you're watching the video. You see this guy on a journey taking you all over the place. And uh, talk to me about the river, the idea behind it. Yeah, well, well the, the concept, you know, came actually from that initial guitar riff. That's uh, a very bluesy type of guitar riff. You like know, a, an acoustic, right? Was it started like an acoustic yeah, in the beginning? It starts off acoustic. And that's still, you know, like I do with most of the recordings, uh, that's the scratch track. And I always leave it there because everybody's playing off the vibe of that raw track. And literally, literally we just put a microphone in front of the guitar. I mean, and with no intention of keeping it, but I purposely left the drag to keep it a very bluesy thing. And I, I think, you know, what we're, what we were trying to say with the song or, you know, take the journey on, we're taking the journey on so many levels, um, you know, with, with this song, it's about, you know, you know, someone who's looking at their past, you know, and, and re reflecting on their past and trying to find, you know, what's this thing that's, you know, not necessarily it's going to be cliche and say wash away the pain, but they're trying to find something. They're in search of something. And the video and the lyrics, you know, leave it opened up for interpretation. So, you know, is it a higher being? You know, is what is this person looking for? Is it, you know, is it something, um, you know, religious? Is it something in the river? Is it, you know, what is it? And I think the lyrically, I mean, Tony did a fantastic job of of uh, of, of capturing that that you know this this journey. Like I said, we we want to do something that was deeper. And then, of course, the, the video encapsulates that as well, you know, of this guy's journey. And he never gets there. And, and it's still the same thing. Like at the, at the end, he's in the river. But yet, the very thing he's looking at, he's on top of a mountain, just now looking at a higher being and just walks off. So you never know. And he just keeps searching and searching. And I think, you know, a lot of people uh, in their life are, are searching for 
you know, so, you know, maybe, maybe reflecting on their past and, and looking for, you know, it's not necessarily redemption, but, but, you know, a, um, you know, the, whatever, maybe something better, something bigger or meaning in their life. And I think we were able to, to capture that on, on so many levels. Man, the song just takes off Tony, your vocals. I mean, I was listening last night just to go back and prepare for today. She's gone and can't find my way from the uh, Go-Go Tuner family record, which was a, well, my first connection with you guys. And that record alone, I mean, crossing multi-genres and it's just a killer album complete. And to hear where you're at today with Heroes and now the river. I mean, when you start wailing the, the whoa, whoa, woes and getting really into it with some of the words, I'm like, woof. I mean, when I think about it, I played the river a couple of times last night. I actually played it before we hit the button uh, about an hour ago a couple of times. And um, your vocals, that that that's, I, I didn't mention the creators of Swamp Rock, and I don't care what anybody says, from Heroes and this is certainly, uh, it, Mike's got that Muscle Shoals thing going, that blues rock. You guys are the first one. We, we talk about it all the time. I can't compare it to anybody out there. Um, and I, I think that's important for folks to really understand that, that, that swampiness that comes into it. But when you listen to it between musically, Tony's vocals, and then that chorus, just give me a little bit. And you got Lanisha Latimer on there and that whole chorus. And then the woes. And then Clayton Ivy on that organ. I guess it's a Hammond B3. Hammond I B3. mean, he just goes nuts on this song. The more I listen to it, I'm like, listen to this guy jump in between him and Mike's guitar playing. Like, damn. I mean, you, you, you capture so much. In this song. At, well, I'll ask one of you. I don't know. Mike probably will have the answer maybe a little bit better than Tony. On the second verse, when Tony, I, th I think it's Lanisha or Tony saying something before you get into just give me a little bit. There's like a mic change. Was there a different mic that any, somebody used? No. No, it was the same mic. Yeah. You I know what I'm saying? Right before the second verse begins, there's like a, a spoken... There's like Lanisha says something and then it just takes off again. Mm -hmm. And I had a note here. I wonder if he changed, like tried something different with a different mic or something. No, that, yeah, I think you're talking about the pre chorus right before the, the whoa, whoa, whoa was coming. Yeah, maybe. Or, or you're talking about before the bridge. No. Yeah, what are you talking about, Pat? Yeah, I think you're talking about right before, just give me a little bit part. There's a part before that part. Yes. Right before that part, there's like a spoken something. I don't know. Well, maybe we'll play it and well, you guys can uh, fill me in. 26,000 plus uh, views. Number one in Australia, Valley FM 89.5. Number one. I mean, it's got to be number one in the States. I don't know what we're doing here, but uh, it kicks ass and takes names. Well, oh, it starts with WBXO, so we're, we're getting there. Yeah, WBXO, number one here in WBXO in Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, really, really, I mean, there's, there's nothing close to it, um, production-wise, musically, lyrically, and uh, between Tony and Lanisha's voices are so compatible. I mean, you, it just, it's, it, it seems like, you know, you never think that, but when you listen to enough of the song, um, I, I get that feeling. I don't know. What do you think, Tone? Yeah, no, she, um, you know, behind, behind my vocal, just sort of like fills in the, uh, fills in the space. You know what I mean? Like I have a certain tone and her tone fills right in with my tone. I mean, in that range, it's not far off. I mean, yeah. whether she takes the lead or you take the lead, it's like, wow. It's like, it is uh, well, I mean, pretty cool. She's an incredible singer. So, you know, it's uh, just happy to have her, you know, help us out on it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, we all know the great Lanisha Latimer, boy. Dance Alone, which we'll play uh, in, in a few. And uh, the, the track you did with her, the original track, Mike, um, Take me, uh, why don't I have this? Taking take, take my heart. Taking my heart, yeah. I mean, wow. I mean, incredible. 
and Lanisha is on Stevie Wonder's uh, tour team as well as J Lo that we need to mention, and we all believe that Lanisha can do it herself. I hope she. I'm, I'm sure she'll listen to this and say, "Lanisha, go put out your own album with Mike and keep going and do your do your own thing." Tony, as a as a vocalist, go ahead, Mike. Did I cut you off? I said no. She's about to hit the road um, for a week with Jennifer Lopez. I think next week. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tony, as a vocalist, um, do you do you practice every day? I don't think I've ever asked you that. Do you go through warm ups to keep where you're at with your vocals these days, which you're hitting in out of the park? Yeah, through the uh, the scales and sing in the shower or sing in the car. Uh, th these days I don't sing at all. I just do scales, you know. But I, I'm always singing, you know, in one shape or the other. Um, do, you know, do, doing my scales, you know, religiously. Uh, it's like working out. You know, you're stretching and stuff. It's like a football player. He stretches before he starts running sprints on the field, tackling. So I do my scales to keep myself limber. I, I take care of myself. I drink. I don't really, you know, I don't smoke or do any of that stuff. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think, it, you know, it, it takes upkeep, especially, you know, um, the more you do it, you know, uh, you, you definitely got to be in shape to do it. You can't just decide uh, we're going to go out on tour for two months and be like, oh, I haven't sang for six months. That ain't going to work. You know, so. What's your favorite song to sing, whether it's in theory or even a, a band, a favorite tune that you just, like, love to, to rip out? Uh, I don't. I don't really have a favorite. I mean, I. I, I listen. It's all. It's all going to be my songs. You know. I've. I've never been one to. I don't really like doing covers per se. And if we do do a cover, it'll, I make it my own. I get you. That's cool. Back for the original. Um, but uh, I would say any songs that I wrote, I love singing. So because when I wrote them, I. That's that's what I developed. You know, that's my style. You know, and that, every singer has their own style, the way they take a breath, the way they want to stop. You know, they go from a high to a low. You know, they, they have certain strategies to their methods. And sometimes when you cover someone's songs, it's like it, it pulls you away from what you naturally would want to do. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I mean, pretty much any song that we've written, you know, old and new stuff, I love. Mike, on a production standpoint, when you're thinking of the river, do you let like a Clayton Ivy just do his thing where he jumps in and just bangs on that uh, that Hammond in different parts of the song? Or, or were you thinking of all those little pieces before you even get into the studio? Uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a process I do with pretty much with, with everybody. You know, um, I basically give them framework and then let them be them. You know, that, that's a very important thing because, um, you know, I don't want to put somebody in the box. So, like with Clayton, um, which I think is very unusual for him, but what I understand was, um, uh, you know, actually I sit like three or four feet away from him and I'm doing like, stop, do this, do that, and giving him um, direction, not that he really needs it, but, um, but there's certain things I think the song needs. So instead of waiting in the control room, stopping the tape, I just stop them in real time. Um, but no, but as far as, you know, I, I prefer him just to, just to go and tee off and be aggressive and do his thing. And, um, you know, like, no, if, if, uh, if I should say nothing, it would be the best. But I always, when, when, when I hear him doing things, it's just like, you know, same thing with, both, you know, with, with anybody I work with. If I hear something, all of a sudden I hear something else. So when another part comes up, I'm like, that other thing that you did there, add it here. Or this thing, add it here, but also now add a layer underneath. Or this should be an octave below. Um, but the initial ideas of what he's playing over, he's just totally improvising, just going for it. And on this song particularly, I mean, I, he was already aggressive to begin with, and I just said to him, just be more aggressive. <laughs> and, and well, I, he, and it I, comes and across. I, Oh, yeah. And I always make the joke that, um, and I, I do think it's like half true. I think when he was playing, um, I mean, there were flames coming out of that friggin', you know, Hammond B3 speaker. And 
Um, and I always say, you know, when he's playing, everyone's hiding for cover because he's just, I mean, he's literally on fire. And, you know, so I think, again, it's, it's how I look at it, you know, it takes a certain level of, usually when you hear Hammond, they're, they're very much of a support role, you know, and he's able to do both. He's a support role, but then he can take also a lead position. But he also, again, he's very complimentary to his song, complimentary to, vo- uh, to the vocals. But, you know, look, I mean, Tony's a friggin' powerhouse. So when, you know, Clayton is just going to do, or anybody else is going to do a, like a little lick, it's got to be of substance. You know, we, 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 we have to match you know, the power of Tony, you know, so, um, and, and he knows how to pick his spots. And um, yeah, so if that answers that question. But I, we do that with everybody that's on it. You know, just you let them tee off and then I go and drive everybody crazy. I mean, like any other song, there's a there's got to be a point where you go, we got it. Because if you massage it more and add more, like, you know, adding ingredients to a blender, it, it could take away from the song. So, Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, th- there are versions of that song. I mean, that he's, that, that, you know, he, he ran through it, you know, uh, maybe 10, 12 times. And it's, Every time it was slightly different, but every time I heard something like, okay, let's save this one, let's save this one. Okay, we'll take this part from track two and put it on here. And, you know, and also we were piecing some stuff together as well. But uh, his approach was a little different each time, but, but he's, he's just, he's just a, a beast of, of a player. And I mean, and the caliber of uh, his musicality is like, even down in Muscle Shoals, um, you know, even amongst the legends, he's sort of really considered like the, the top guy here. And, you know, I mean, he's legendary. Obviously, he's legendary for obviously all the records he's done and, and all that. But even how he does his charts and how he comes in, he sort of, everybody sort of looks up like he's the guy amongst, even like, you know, if you want to compare him to like a Spooner and all those other guys, no, he's the guy. Like, he's, he's, he's pretty like, I always make the joke with, uh, you know, with, with Tony, uh, like how musical that guy is at the end. I was actually on the river and he's like, well, you know, this thing's got a, a G minor, 11, ninth, eighth, 11 flat, eighth chord at the end. And, you know, and everybody in the studio, we're all looking at each other like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. the chord. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and nobody's correct. And we even know if it's a real chord, but like, yeah, sounds great, Spoon. I mean, Spooner, I mean, uh, Clayton, but, but he is that ridiculous, you know, and, and um, as you were doing the bios for, you know, for like the River Song and I've gotten to know him, I, I mean, I just learned a lot about him that I didn't realize actually he was um, a part of Motown for four or five years and he produced the Temptations and Supremes and he had, um, you know, several gold records. So a lot, you know, I, I thought he was actually just like, you know, one of like the killer side guys, but he actually, um, you know, wrote for a lot of people, like the produced for Motown and then, you know, great business guy. He actually owned a studio called Wishbone, which they just reopened recently uh, with another famous artist, but that was, that was Clayton Studio. What, what was his take when you played the, comp- the, the final product? Was he, I mean, happy. It's you know, just you got to play this song loud, and you got to have headsets on, headphones on, to really get the whole vibe of it. And uh, I just can picture. I don't know the man, but I can just picture him jumping up and down and just having a big smile on his face. Did, did, what kind of feedback did he? Right. What kind of feedback did he provide when he heard the final product? Well, was, well there, there was a few feedback. I mean, his very first feedback was. Mike, thanks for letting me play real music, which was, you know, pretty mind blowing. And then the second thing is when uh, he took me to another room, and also now this the sixteen year old boy came out of him, and he was talking about when he saw Deep Purple and all the bands from that era that used the ham, and and he was he was just so happy. I mean, you know, um, I mean, he was just beyond ecstatic to be so aggressive and to play rock. The thing in Muscle Shoals, it's known for a particular sound. And 
and, and it's obviously it's a legendary sound. And but we're, we're, you know, and also now we're having him on a hard rock slash metal track, you know, with uh, Cornell meets Tyler down here, and um, you know, so for him to do that, he never like he tells me he's another one like with all these other guys that we've been working with. He goes, we don't get to do this down here. So um, you were able yeah, to I knock mean, that uh, boundary. You're able to knock that barrier down and let him do something that he's always loved to do. And obviously he doesn't get a, much of a he, chance. He doesn't to get, do it. he doesn't get to do it at all because, you know, and, you know, and, and the other thing that's, um, that's well known down here and, and that, like in Nashville as well, they always call doing sessions with a smile. So they, they do a session, they move on, you know, they get to the next session, next session. And every time I did a session with him, he was there for 90 minutes, two hours, three hours. It didn't, it didn't matter. Um, you know, it, it, I mean, even just to do the track was three or four hours. And then he would just want to talk about the music afterwards. And he just loved it. And, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, and, and the other thing that I have to say too, I mean, he was just, um, he was just so blown away by Tony like that that floored him like you know whether it's heroes or the river song i mean he's singing with tony and he's you know limp syncing you know doing karaoke tony but again that's why i felt like you know, we hit it out of the park for us you know to, to move this guy who's done you know um so about 400 million records or so and it's been on several thousand records and when he's hearing our music and hearing tony sing and he's like like same thing like who's that singer i mean he he loved tony so much that he actually did a, a video to tony just to let tony know like yeah you're you're you you know you're amazing you know and, you got and, it um, man that is so cool man wow so i have a legend so, do that <clears throat> yeah i mean he you know tony just i think again i think sometimes um you know maybe on a serious note on the side i think he doesn't realize actually how great he is and and, and I, I, you know, when I do a lot of these sessions and, you know, the, you know, I, I want, I, I try to reinforce that message and um, because I, I want him to be like, if he was in there with me, because when he's, if he was in the room with me and he saw Clayton's reaction to his vocals, I think Tony would be blown away. You know, that's what I was like, Clayton, let's do a video for Tony. And, um, but he still swears up and down that he used to work with Tony in this um in, in, a, in a hard rock project um where it was like um one of the original like it was like the original incarnation of toto that did become toto but there's apparently a singer from that area goes no i, I he still swears that he worked with tony that it was tony and, uh, <laughs> unless tony was uh yeah well if tony was maybe like seven years old at the time you know maybe but um yeah. But yeah, but he's but it's really funny. But he swears up and down that he's he's worked with Tony. And, uh, but yeah, but he's he's he was really blown away um, by Tony for sure. Tony, what do you think when he got that video from this guy? It's like, is this a real deal? Is this really happening? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm always like that. I'm like, yeah, you know, they're probably just saying it's good because you know, what are they going to say? You know, like I, I always take that tap. But he sent me a video. Um, and, you got to post that, man. That'd be cool. Yeah, I don't know if he would want me to post it. That's why I never posted oh, it. Well, yeah, it could be a, just a personal I, thing, but... I have it, and um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I am was I was blown away. Like, I don't know what to... You know, I didn't know what to, to write back to him, you know, because I, I don't know what to say when, you know, people give you compliments, you know what I mean? But um, I'm, I'm just happy that he wanted to play on this stuff, and he thinks it's cool, and it's it's really incredible. No, I mean, I, look, it doesn't get any better than that when you get a guy like that that says, hey, you're the real deal. And I remember when we talked with Heroes came out that Mike is just, no, no, you got to do better. You got to do better. You got to do better. And As I said, you, the difference of your voice from She's Gone to where you're at today is like, holy crap, man. Hard work pays to get you. I mean, you got to feel that as well, right? I mean, you know. You put in the work. I mean, heroes. I don't know how many takes Mike drove you crazy. Probably 200. No, do it again. Do it again. I, I, I never drive him crazy. No, so not you, Mike. Hold, hold on, Tony. Let me just 
take yeah. him out of the picture here. For a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to keep the Italian guy there. But you got to you self satisfaction, Tony. You got to yeah. you got to be on top of the world with uh, both of the tracks with you know, yeah. heroes and well, even all of them to know where you you know the you, where you're at today is incredible. I, I I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, you feel a sense of accomplishment that you're getting better in your craft and and the songs are getting better, which is, you know, most important, um, you know, because ultimately it's about the song. But, it, it's you know, I, every every singer wants to be complimented, whether they admit it or not. And, you know, and I really appreciate it coming from people who are way above me that I can never catch as far as what they accomplished. But I, uh, I cherish that. Yeah. I can't wait to see you perform this live. I mean, I don't know if Clayton would be part of the band on a, on a live show, which would be if you guys are able to schedule some sort of a tour for a bunch of dates. But uh, to hear you do this live and get wonderful Lanisha out, man, that would be uh, that would be something to see. Yeah, that's got, I mean, that's got to be that. That's the ultimate, right? Right now, you're in a somewhat of a challenge like any other band you put out something you really can't promote it we're dealing with a new track trying to get it out to corporate trying to you know build off of heroes and keep the momentum going and then you every day you're pro i know i'm a numbers guy and i'm looking at my analytics and you look at the river with uh, 26,000 views so Somebody likes it. At least Australia lo loves it, and I love it. And I know other there, there DJs go. that you 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 uh, are being interviewed. Yeah, at least we got we got two two out of the twenty six thousand right there. Two out of twenty six. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm just, I'm gonna be nice. I don't want to say anything. You know, there. Are, I don't know what these stations are. You know, you know the whole politics of it, and it's just sad. I mean, yeah. there are other bands out there that have great tracks just like this one and um you know whether somebody's paying or whatever it just it's a whole sad state of affairs to be honest with you because yeah. i know i can tell my wonderful bride mute mike and molly and listen to this and tell me what you really think when you buy the track what's missing and yeah. just just to create the whole swamp rock of it you know i'm like that that's that's a whole genre in itself i mean and you find yeah, that i think we were able to create something very unique you know and, and it's the blend of of everybody you know it's yeah. what i call it's like you know tony's the second coming of like well i would say cornell but i'm, I'm getting a little bit more of saying if cornell and, and tyler had a uh, a child it would be tony and um but you know but if you add again uh, you know they're getting back to trying the cliche to, of the river right it's literally um songs about the river but yeah there, there is magic in that river uh you know i mean it's that it goes back you know ten thousand years you know and then uh, you know of course then you add the clayton and lanisha and on that particular song we have andy from um missing persons you know and another ingredient that we never really mentioned is, is the bass player on yeah no I, I, was gonna, I was gonna i was gonna ask you that to give credit to everybody that's involved and then i'm only we're only tapping the bigger names but yeah, yeah if you don't mind taking a minute of of going over everybody that was part of the uh the, the whole production i think it's important yeah so on the on the river song it's uh andy sinisi and he plays at missing persons plays at frankie valley sebastian bach and like his same th he's he's probably in that same i think he's done like same thing 200 acts but he's more known for the Missing Persons, Frankie Valley. I mean, and that's tough shoes to fill if you think about it. He's filling Terry Bozio's shoes in Missing Person. Um, you know, and and he's definitely no joke. You know, he's, he's he's a beast as well. And um, but the biggest surprise had to be the the bass player, and his his name is Colin Lott. And how he came about uh, again was you know um, I, I call it everyone called fate, happy accident. Uh, when the pandemic hit, um, the engineer did not want to go into his studio, but I, I was just itching to get in and record and, and write. So he says, well, you can use, you know, my, my assistant engineer, you know, because there's a process how I go and write. So I started writing 
um, you know, like he'll, he was doing the drum loops for me and I was doing the guitar riffs. And then all I said to him, I said, you know what, this song needs some bass. And he goes, well, I play bass. I'm like, okay, this, you know, I, I didn't know if he, honestly, I don't know if he, I never heard him play one note. I had no, no freaking idea. And then he played and then, um, yeah, and then sure enough, he fits perfect, you know, and he's got a little bit of, um, you know, John Paul Jones, you know, meets, you know, the, the bass player from Stone Temple Pilots. And again, his choice of notes are, you know, it's, that, it's really key. If you really listen to the River Song and Heroes and, and some of these upcoming songs, um, again, it's very complimentary to the music. It's not, he's not using, obviously, um, not, he's, he's using certain phrases, again, that's even maybe a touch of Muscle Shoals. There's a certain bass style that they have in Muscle Shoals as well, um, where they're not just doing roots, but they're not doing like all this flashy bass stuff as well. They're, they're picking specific notes to complement what the vocals are doing and what the music is doing. And he has that. And, but the funny thing in town, no one knows he's a bass player. And, and the other thing that was really, uh, you know, a, really a great blessing in disguise is, you know, Tony and I are, are huge, you know, rival Suns fans. And the kid happened to be um, the assistant engineer of their last record that won a Grammy for Best Rock Record. So he was the assistant engineer when they recorded in Mosul Shoals and in RCA. So of course, that, so for have that, having that guy who studied under Dave Cobb to just to be my in a way, uh, our fill-in. He's, he's our second guy, you know, and, and Charles is, is our main chief engineer, but uh, Charles Hall, I mean, um, I have to, I have to give him a shout out too. So the chief engineer is Charles Holloman from East Avalon Studios in Muscle Shoals. And, um, you know, and he's, he's a little bit of a, you know, a genius guy as well. You know, he's, he's really quirky. He's exactly what you would think. You know, he's, um, like his gear all over the place. He has probably the best gear on the planet, but it's all over the place. And, you know, if you're a singer, you're a guitar player, I mean, um, it doesn't matter what instrument you play, you go to the corners of his room and all of a sudden, what does this pedal do? And what does that do? Or, you know, when we were running Tony's vocals through the preamps that Jimi Hendrix used on, uh, you know, in the, in the late 60s that they used on, Jimi Hendrix's guitars, basses, and wow. drums. And there's a famous picture where Jimi Hendrix is sitting in front of eight of them. Well, he's got three of them. And then the other, you know, and then he's just got the coolest, like, vintage analog gear. So while we're still using Pro Tools, he's using, you know, some of the, you know, the, you know, the, the magical stuff from the 70s and stuff that you would, you know, that you would hear on, on all the legendary records. It's not, you know, and I was told too, it's not only having the gear, it's that he knows actually how to use it, you know, and the thing in, in him and I are very much in sync when we're in, we're, we're very, that's why we do those 18 hour days, like when him and I are like syncing up on a verse or on a, on a part, we're, we're not finishing until it's done. So it could be say like two in the morning and also like, yeah, this we got something here. We'll go until, I don't care, 10, 11, and we'll go another eight hours, 10 hours just to get it right because we, we don't want to lose that moment. That, gotcha. like, we're both hearing something. And so for him to be like so dedicated to the project as well, I mean, I, you know, I have to give him a big shout out. You know, and he's, you know, he's definitely a big part of um, you know, the process. So where do we go from here? Um, any thoughts? I mean, I know you got all kinds of... Uh, songs on the shelf that you haven't released any thought of an ep um containing or just keep throwing a single out here and there until maybe you can get on the road and, and do a little uh, uh live show promotion um yeah i mean i i think i think right now we <clears throat> we have two songs that haven't been released that are complete and we're, we're in the process of working on more I guess I'd like to, you know, maybe, maybe at this point, maybe, you know, do a, do a six or eight song EP and then just like put that collection to bed. You know, this way, if we ever do have the opportunity to go out and play, we got something to sell. 
I, I think like part of the, the, the way the music industry is today, where it's like the single only thing, I guess it's great. And we're trying to play that game. But at the same time, it's like a never ending album. So, you, you know, a band could go through a year and a half of time and there's really nothing that encapsulates 2020 or 2021. So I think it's like, it's all, it's like you want those songs to have something and now, okay, now we're off to the next project. And I think that's kind of missing in today's world. So we're kind of we're kind of trying to play both sides and uh, you know try to figure out what, what what works best. Should we just do an EP and and now we're done and let's let's start again on a new record, or is it let's just release singles and just keep the thing alive? You know, because it's all about you know people don't have a big attention span anymore. You know. No, I hear you, and I like the idea personally of the singles of the EP um, to put out a 9, 12 track album and not being able to perform it and really push it. The good part is people are listening and they're home and they have the time to grab it and want and you know uh, that's me the new guy the new music keep throwing it out um, but uh, I, I don't know if going putting out an album is uh the right way to go but i'm not a musician but um i think you want as you mentioned you want to get somebody's attention stay with it let it go for a month or two i think a video is very important you guys hit the ball out of the park with uh both videos dance alone and uh certainly uh with mike and lanisha and certainly the river i mean that young man did a, a hell of a job which is great tony if there was somebody you can collaborate with besides that wonderful guy in muscle shows and that beautiful young lady out in california who would you like to collaborate with on a song you mean as far as a producer or no just as a like a duet just uh, another uh nice. track any any uh rock R&B solo singer that you would like to uh, do a, a... I mean, I, I, I would, you know, uh, obviously Tyler's a hero of mine. Uh, you know, Jay Buchanan, I would love to sing a track with him. Um, you know, Robert Plant, you know, all the people you could probably pick out. Yeah, Robert Plant, that would be cool. I'm a big, you know, Glenn Hughes fan. I, I love the way Glenn Hughes sings. I think you should get Tony to do a duet with Paul Rogers, Pat. Pat. <laughs> Pat. <laughs> well, I've talked to Glenn Hughes and I talked to Paul Rogers. Maybe Mark Slaughter too. Can I? Uh, he's a go-go tuner. Uh, Mark Slaughter, yeah, a go-go tuner customer. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I will see what I can do there, Mister Cavino. We will see if we can pass that message along for uh, Mister Monster. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tony. I'll tell Paul Rogers I'll sweep the floor. Uh, so. <laughs> he okay. sang happy birthday for me I'm like doesn't get any better than that I guess for that, at least that day I guess Tony didn't was, sing happy birthday for you yet. I yeah I know, know. Well, we'll, well I got hopefully yeah. I'm around for another one coming up and I'll let you know yeah. Tony in August we could uh, we could work on that he's got, he's got to keep up with Paul Rogers you know Five shows at the past. doing the birthday songs for, for Calamari yeah but for Mr. Monster, I don't know. You got to be the hardest working guy in the business between uh, the director of uh, some, a, a company, vice president of sales of a company, the CEO of, uh, again, our go go tuner company. Uh, how, I don't even know how you transition from your corporate job into your music job, but even though your corporate business is still in the music business. Um, right. I don't know how you how you're able to pull that off. Besides, obviously, great organization. <clears throat> yeah, no, I'm I'm quite organized. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit too organized, but that's how I'm able to get things done. And um, you know, and I'm able to put things in compartments. So when it's time to you know to do the, the theory record and write, nothing else exists except for that. And my phone is off. My business doesn't exist. That's what I'm focusing on. And when I'm doing the business thing as well, it's the same deal. I, I'm not focusing on the music. But when I'm doing something, it's 100%. But it's very, I'm very methodical with it. And, and um, if you ever saw my, uh, 
if you ever saw that movie with Russell Crowe with all the paper and, um, I, or, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much that guy. I have, I'm, I'm not exaggerating in, in any way. I have three, you know, it was a big calendars you get at, uh, you know, Staples. I literally have three calendars and five notebooks and they're all lined up at all times. And, and I just work my, work my way through the list and, um, you know, and I'm, I'm able to get it, get it done. You know, I know it, it's not, for me, I, you know, people say, well, how do you do all this stuff? And, and for me, it's, that's, that's my normal, it's been normal like that for quite a long time. Um, I, I don't know what I would do if, uh, if I didn't have all those things. What, what do you, well, before I ask you this question, how did you, you, how do you use your corporate skills in music and in music? In musicianship skills in the corporate world how do you how do you use both in different aspects well that's that's a good question i think in um i think it's made me a great uh organizer uh being you know running running the companies um you know whatever taking the leader role and taking the um organization role you know organizing um, you know, um, you know the, the music end of it. Uh, I mean, from getting all the players, from booking the studios, from um, setting deadlines. Okay, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get this done by this time, and no matter what, we're gonna get this done. Um, so I think I'm, you know, I think that this I'm naturally, uh, I'm, you know, I'm I'm just a, you know, the, whatever. I'm, I'm in the leader role or CEO role in, in a lot of aspects. Um, so I think that's helped with the music because I have to, you know, again, say like some of these songs, you know, I have to, all right, you have to corral a choir and then the bass player. And then you got the cellist, you know, which we never spoke about as well, you know, and you got the orchestra and then you got Tony's schedule. And, and I mean, you have so many things, moving parts. And so I think um, because of my business background, I'm able to organize all that. And, um, and vice versa. And um, some people pointed out, I think Tony pointed out that um, that's something that I didn't notice about myself, that, um, that when I'm doing music, it's bringing um, more creativity to my business. And it must be stimulating another part of, of my brain that, um, you know, everybody says I'm a different person. It's, it's like... A, not that I'm more excited or I don't know exactly what it is, but it's bringing um, a higher level of, of creativity to, to my overall business. So I think that's how they're affecting each other. Do, do you enjoy, what do you enjoy the most? Is the songwriting part, the guitar playing part, the producing part out of, out of those three, which, which do you get the most enjoyment or they're all equal for the most part in their own. No, they're, <laughs> they're far from equal. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's, it all depends. You know, I, I really love the, um, the producer role. I, you know, I love, you know, um, you know, if you add Clayton and the drums and you just start adding things and you're hearing things and you're, 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 you know, you're experimenting, you know, and all of a sudden something clicks and, and you hear like, wow, that's cool. And then you, you know, when you start discovering things and you're putting all this time and as the song goes on and, and then finally, when you get the end result, I mean, for me, that, that's, that's really exciting. I mean, when we heard the final results of obviously the river and heroes, I mean, I, I couldn't be the most, you know, I'm, I'm one of the most happiest guys. And, like I know it, yeah. These songs are killer. This is great, you know. And, and I did my job, you know, if that makes sense. Um, on that level, but I think the the only other thing that's fun for me is is um, I think even when I sort of like you know just get to play and just be the artist as well. So I'm when I'm playing the guitar, I'm not I'm not thinking as the producer guy. I'm just thinking. You know, I'm just going to go and play, and just whatever I'm feeling, you know, I'm just going to go and play, and that part of it is, is really enjoyable, you know, and um, you know because also prior to that, and, and I know Tony's the same. I would think the same in, in his approach. Tony and I are really we do so much preparation before going into any kind of recording format 
or writing format. So when we're in, everything is just all emotion at that point. When we're, when, when we're actually performing, so that that is um, you know a lot of the fun. And then of course the whole but going into studio and then layering all that other stuff not so much fun. But um, <laughs> you know when, we're, when I'm working on one measure and we're trying to get what's that one sound? What's just one thing? What's just one thing? And um, and you listen to the same eight notes for about, you know, six hours in a row. And that's so much fun. Well, you're but, a hell um, of a, you're a hell of a guitar player and you're a hell of a, a, a musician and songwriter. But I kind of thought that you would say the producer part. And I think that comes across in heroes of all the elements, just like you just said, that one measure, you like trying things different. Uh, and that comes oh, yeah. across on the go, go tuner record too. You know, there's just so much diversity. Uh, you don't take the yeah. normal. Your mic doesn't take yeah. a touch of mic doesn't take the normal path that we're used to hearing. And I think that's what draws my love for that. what I, you do. I, I appreciate Mostly, that. You, not you just recognize you, that. Yeah, no, I appreciate that that you recognize that. I mean, I'm I'm very, um, uh, you know, I was very proud to. Um, but the result of, of, you know, being in a producer role, I mean, there's a lot of responsibility. And, um, you know, so, yeah, I mean, for, for me, that, that is, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, the, the reward of that is just, you know, really just gets me, you know. And again, and like I said, with, there's that aspect of it, but when I'm also in a producer role, you know, I look at it in a different way, you know, maybe a different way of, of other people so say like we get such an amazing track out of tony or the, or the drummer or clayton um you know now i feel like i have a responsibility to everybody that just kicked ass on the track i better damn well do my job as a producer and make it great otherwise i just wasted um, you know like one of the best singers tracks or or you know keyboards tracks you know and so um so yeah, it's a balance, but yeah, but I I, I really uh, just just love that. Yeah, now you you bring it up, you bring it up two hundred percent, and it, and, and, I, and, and, I here, and I was gonna say, and, and then my other you know uh, philosophy in it, and and with this with music is, you know, no is 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 not in our vocabulary, so we'll just experiment and experiment and experiment. You know, it's like, um, and it's the fun thing of working with, with Charles and um, like, you know, we, we can knock a chair over and we hear a tone. We're like, yes, that, let's mic that up. Do that let's again, do that, that again. again. <laughs> right. And um, I think sometimes, you know, it's, it's funny, like, and, and I know Tony, you know, he's, I think he mentioned actually on your show where um, like I told Tony, like, yeah, we got to do this. We'll try this. We'll try this. We'll try this. And I... <laughs> I think sometimes he thinks I'm out of my mind. He's just like, now, but, but I think now, again, I mean, he, there is such a trust level that I don't take from granted from, you know, from Tony as, as well, you know, because we're partners in this. But now he's just like, all right, Mike's out of his mind. Just go, you do your thing. And because I'm trying to explain to Tony, like, all right, I want to do this. It's going to sound like electronic drums, but it's not. But then I hear a choir here, but then I need you to do this on the vocal thing. So I'm going to add this keyboard here. And I, I could almost see him like, um, all right. <laughs> really? Think. Again? I mean, Heroes, right. I, I, Heroes just, there's so many different spots in Heroes of of change and um, addition and adding different ingredients. Like I said, you don't, there's something about what you're thinking that doesn't take the normal path and i think you told me that that you're like oh, i don't i don't i don't want to do it that way and uh right. you raised the bar you said to me i'm gonna raise the bar time to raise the bar we did a really good job but she's gone and can't um right. you know can't find my, and i'm gonna i'm gonna raise the bar and that would you know be that, that's what makes a, 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 a top producer is by getting the best out of that, that was, everybody that, well that was yeah, and that was really important. And um, and everybody knows me that if I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. When, when I was saying, yeah, I'm going to raise the bar, I'm going to raise the bar. And, um, you know, and I, I know I keep going back to Tony, but, you know, when, when Tony and I started um, the new version of In Theory, um, and, you know, um, again, I'm not sure if Tony remembers the conversation, but 
you know, I think, I think I have, a, I, I, my memory is impeccable. Like I can remember conversations from 20 years ago, but, um, but with Tony, he said something to me when I was, when we were doing, uh, right towards the end of the go-go record. And it just, I don't know if the way he said it, um, whether it's the sincerity of, of how he said it or, I mean, you know, or just whatever, Tony and I just had such a chemistry. What Tony said to me is, look, before I die, I want to be known as one of the great singers. So I take that to heart, like as stepping into producer role, like, okay, you want to be a great singer? I'm going to do everything in my power to to bring that out of you. Of course, I mean, Tony has to do all the hard work. I like to sit there like, yeah, you know, well, well. but I mean, he has to do all the hard work, of course. And, um, and you know, and, and I drove him hard. I'm, I know we make jokes about it, but, um, but again, Tony and I are both the same. We both wanted to achieve a certain level. And um, yeah, so, you know, and then sure enough, li- listen to Tony on the, on the tracks. You know, he's, I, I would put him up there with the, you know, easily with the, you know, with the Glenn Hughes or a Cornell or a Tyler or any of those guys easily. That, you know, he's, he's that guy now, you know, no, no doubt he, about that. And, and, you know, and he's getting attention from, you know, mm-hmm. not only like, uh, you know, DJs and, and bands, but uh, I mean, you know, the, the legends, but I mean, every, I mean, everybody's just, and, you know, again, because we speak so much. So, I know this is a conversation or interview that's maybe new for people, but that's usually the first reaction is, who the fuck is that, <laughs> is that guy? Right. You know, no so doubt about again, it. for me, when, when I hear that, you know, it's, it brings a lot of pride in me um, because, you know, I thought that was part of Tony's journey to, to bring something out as much as he was getting pissed off at me and as much as he wanted to choke me on zoom and, I mean, I, I, there's been so many times where he'll send me a track. Like, he's all super excited, and then I don't respond. And he already knows what that means. If I don't respond right away, you're not liking he's it. like, I'm not liking it. Um, but I was doing my best to be also constructive. So I'd listen to it. I'm like, well, I like what you did on the breath on that one, but maybe try this or maybe sing a little bit more behind this and try that. And, yeah, I mean... To, to his credit, I mean, as as much, um, you know, I was, try, you know, again, trying to say no, you know, no is not in a vocabulary. He could have easily said, look, this is my style. This is what I do. This is it. This is what I do. But he was like, all right, let me give that a shot. And I would say, well, try it again. No, nope. try it again. And then, you know, try it again. And finally, I was like, dude, what the fuck do you want? <laughs> and, um, you Hold know, on, but, Tony. I'll, I'll get even right now, Tony. Hold on a minute. I know you want to choke him to death at times, but we'll just get him out of the view for five seconds here. Yeah. But, uh, but 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 I do think that you know. But Tony, at the end of the day, Tony appreciates the end result as well because you know what? I care. I mean, I care obviously about the overall sound product, of the band. Yeah. But uh, but when he said to me, "I want I want to be great before I die," and you know what? He achieved it. You're there, you Tony. Know, you don't have it. to worry about that, brother. I, I can I'm not listen to and... soon either, so okay. <laughs> I'm not going nowhere. Oh uh, hey, just for our listeners, if they haven't heard us talk about it before, you guys were in a band, Big Mouth. What was that, Tony? Back in the eight early eighties? No, no, it was uh nineties. Nineties? Yeah. I, I, I always say about the band like if you 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 can uh, you can find the record on uh, you know we we were signed to EMI and uh, and it was the the sub label was Brunette in in Europe in Japan and we got signed to them and every time I listen to the record it just it, it sounds like we it, I mean the music is sort of dated because it was that time but the production and everything on it and and the songs you know I thought were great and. And, you know, and I say it a hundred times, if that record was put out three years sooner, it would have been a totally different story. I, I firmly believe that. We were just one step late. It was right when we were finally grasping traction. Actually, we, we were going to be an opening act for ACDC in Europe. Wow. 
talking about all that. Because in Japan, we were, we were getting traction. They were using one of our songs in one of the movies that apparently was popular. And at that time, we were talking about doing something possibly with ACDC opening up for them. And then the whole grunge thing hit. And, and, and I, just, I just subtract like three, four years sooner, it would have been a totally different... Not, not that I'm complaining where we are now. I'm just saying... That, that's how much, you know, like everything that me and Mike do, I just totally believe in. It's not like it's some cheesy 80s record. It's not, you know, everything we do has substance. Well, I always say, look, things happen for a reason. And maybe and Australia, we love you, whether they open for you or not. You're still number <laughs> one, Tony, yeah, in Australia. The United States to get, you know, number one. I don't know. You know. But Tony, my question but, but, is. You know, but, but, but I have to say, though. We were number one in Australia, but we didn't make number one on WBXO. Yes, you have. Are you kidding me? I wouldn't have this. I wouldn't have the shirt or the Go Go Tuner. Are you kidding me? But my question, Tony, on a Tony, on a serious note, what, what I was getting to with the big mouth in your band back then with Mike and you were signed. What would you tell the to Tony today of the Tony back then of what you've accomplished? I mean, for all the years of where you are today, what advice would you give Tony Cavino of Big Mouth um, today? Uh, I would say, like, if I was going back and talking to that person. Yes, sir. Um, just have more confidence in yourself. Yeah. I mean, I have, you know, I have, I have that issue. Like, I, I always don't think I'm good. And it's a sickness. But... It, in, in a roundabout way, it, it keeps me sharp. So I guess I use it to my advantage, but I always think I suck. And I always think when someone says, oh, you're good, it's just because they're being polite. That's just the way I am. And, uh, you yeah, know, it's just... All right, well, Tony, you, you, you suck in a good way, Tony. You suck in a good way. And we love you, brother. Yeah. No, that's a good answer. No, it's a good answer. I think that's uh, important that we look back at times and see where we came. Look... Yeah. Moving forward, look where you come from. I mean, look where you're at today. You even though Mike busted your nuts for all those tracks and at least heroes, the end result is that song should be in a video, should be no, not in a video, in a movie, could be number one anywhere. And I think there is still uh, certainly hope for that to happen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The momentum going. Yeah, well, I'm not done. I mean, we're not done by any stretch. I'm just. Yeah, in fact, we're, we're really excited. You know, the other day we, you know, we, we added one more song, actually. So we start tracking that on Tuesday, by the way. So I'm pretty excited about that. It, there you go, the business, those... the, the, the business guy. He's already got the date, the time. Tony, don't be late. 8.40 <laughs> my time, 9.40 your time. And the business mic, the touch of mic that we just love. Nope. That's Mike, and you know my thing is that eh, that sounds cool, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I talk to him at ten o'clock at night, and then I'm up at five in the morning, and he's still hitting like buttons on Facebook. I'm like, doesn't this guy ever sleep? Oh uh, yeah, I just got off for a four hour meeting with China or wherever. I'm like, oh. unbelievable. But but this new song that we just came out fits the whole swamp rock thing, and um. Yeah, it's, we're, Tony and I, we're, we're, we were pretty excited about it. And um, again, it was sort of like, it was, <laughs> that's a whole other, uh, maybe off the air. Uh, uh, we'll we'll talk video, about that uh, off the air, but you guys on, don't on how, on how that song came about. But um, but yeah, there, there's, there's, you know, again, you know, I, I really feel like that song is, is magic and I can't wait to produce it. So my, my producer had to ready on, so I, I already booked the studio. He's already set. I booked the, the orchestra. They're set, and um, yeah. So it's just, it's gonna it's, it fits exactly what we're doing, uh, and hopefully, you know, I, I can, you know, take a couple of notches up more <laughs> if, if that's possible. Uh, but that's cool. I mean, but the bar is raised at a high that I, you know I, we know we know how to hit that bar. So now uh, you know we'll, we'll try to push it, uh, beyond it. Find them on Facebook, in theory, original, hit the like button, their website, in theory, band.com. Check it out. Buy the track. Support yes. these guys like I do. Yeah, Tony's like, yeah. Please. Time to Just do a spend, triple. Spend the dollar twenty nine on Amazon.com. Oh, that dollar twenty nine, man. Come on. 
time to do the trifecta here on Pat Soundbites with my buds, Mike Monster and Tony Cavito, and the band in theory, the River Heroes, and the little dance along with Lanisha Latimer. Gentlemen, I love you guys. Thank Talk you, to you soon. Fat. All here on Pat Soundbites, IGTV. Keep rocking. Yeah. <laughs> Lay me down and wash me in the river mm -mm. Traveled a long road, my path has taken its toll
I have not 